Hi, welcome to Real Estate Channel. प्रस्तुत किए जाने के पश्चात बजट की प्रतियां आपको मेंबर्स पोर्टल के माध्यम से भी उपलब्ध करा दी जाएगी माननीय वित्त मंत्री श्रीमती निर्मला सीतारामन honorable speaker i present the budget for 2425 introduction the people of india have reposed their faith in the government led by honorable prime minister shri narendra modi and reelected it for a historic third term under his leadership we are grateful for their support faith and trust in our policies we are determined to ensure that all indians regardless of religion caste gender and age make substantial progress in realizing their life goals and aspirations global context the global economy while performing better than expected is still in the grip of policy uncertainties elevated asset prices political uncertainties and shipping disruptions continue to pose significant downside risks for growth and upside risks to inflation in this context india's economic growth continues to be the shining as exception and will remain so in the years ahead india's inflation continues to be low stable and moving towards the 4% target core inflation that is non food and non fuel currently is 3.1% steps are being taken to ensure supplies of perishable goods reach markets adequately interim budget as mentioned in the interim budget we need to focus on four major castes namely the garib mahilaye yuva and annadata the poor women youth and the farmer for annadata we announced higher minimum support prices a month ago for all major crops delivering on the promise of at least a 50% margin over cost pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana was extended for 5 years benefiting more than 80 crore people administrative actions for approval and implementation of various schemes announced in the interim budget are well underway the required allocations have been made budget team turning attention to the full year and beyond in this budget we particularly focus on employment skilling msmes and the middle class I am happy to announce the Prime Minister's package of five schemes and initiatives to facilitate employment, skilling, and other opportunities for 4.1 crore youth over a five-year period, with a central outlay of 2 lakh crore rupees. I will speak about them shortly. while more details may be seen in the annexure this year i have made a provision of 1.48 lakh rupees 14 1.48 lakh crore rupees for education employment and skilling budget priorities the people have given a unique opportunity to our government 
to take the country on the path of strong development and an all-round prosperity. In the interim budget, we promise to present a detailed roadmap for our pursuit of Vikasit Bharat in line with the strategy set in the interim budget. This budget envisages sustained efforts on the following nine priorities for generating ample opportunities for all. Number one, productivity and resilience in agriculture. Number two, employment and skilling. Number three, inclusive human resource development and social justice. Four, manufacturing and services. Five, urban development. Six, energy security. Seven, infrastructure. Eight, innovation, research and development. And nine, next generation reforms. Subsequent budgets will build on these and add more priorities and actions. A more detailed formulation will be carried out as part of the economic policy framework about which I will speak later in this speech. This budget details some of the specific actions to be initiated in the current year towards fulfillment of these priorities with potential for transformative changes. The budget also covers some of the previously made announcements with intent to strengthen them and step up their implementation for expediting our journey towards the goal of Vikasid Bharat. Priority one, productivity and resilience in agriculture. Transforming agricultural research. Our government will undertake a comprehensive review of the research, agricultural research set up to bring the focus on raising productivity and developing climate resilient varieties. Funding will be provided in challenge mode, including to the private sector. Domain experts, both from the government and outside, will oversee the conduct of such research. Release of new varieties. New 109 high yielding and climate resilient varieties of 32 field and horticultural crops will be released for cultivation by farmers. Natural farming. In the next two years, one crore farmers across the country will be initiated into natural farming, supported by certification and branding. Implementation will be through scientific institutions and willing gram panchayats. 10,000 need-based bio-input resource centers will be established. Missions for pulses and oil seeds. For achieving self-sufficiency in pulses and oil seeds, we will strengthen their production, storage, and marketing. As announced in the interim budget, a strategy is being put in place to achieve Atmanirbharta for oil seeds such as mustard, groundnut, sesame, soybean, and sunflower. Vegetable production and supply chains. Large-scale clusters for vegetable production will be developed closer to major consumption centers. We will promote farmer-producer organizations, cooperatives, and startups for vegetable supply chains, including for collection and storage and marketing. Digital public infrastructure for agriculture. Buoyed by the success of the pilot project, our government, in partnership with the states, will facilitate the implementation of the digital public infrastructure in agriculture for coverage of farmers and their lands in three years. During this year, digital crop survey for Karif using the DPI will be taken up in 400 districts. The details of six crore farmers and their lands 
will be brought into the farmer and land registries. Further, the issuance of Jan Samarth based Kisan credit cards will be enabled in five states. Shrimp production and export. Financial support for setting up a network of nucleus breeding centers for shrimp brood stocks will be provided. Financing for shrimp farming, processing and export will be facilitated through NABARD. National cooperation policy. Our government will bring out a national cooperation policy for systematic, orderly and all-round de development of the cooperative sec sector, fast-tracking growth of rural economy and generation of employment opportunities on a large scale will be the policy goal. This year, I have made a provision of 1.52 lakh crore rupees for agriculture and allied sectors. Priority two, employment and skilling. Employment linked incentive. Our government will implement following three schemes for employment linked incentive as part of the Prime Minister's package. These will be based on enrollment in the EPFO and focus on recognition of first time employees and support to employees and employers. Scheme A, first timers. This scheme will provide one month wage to all persons newly entering the workforce in all formal sectors. Direct benefit transfer of one month salary in three installments to first time employees as registered in the EPFO will be up to 15,000 rupees. The eligibility limit will be a salary of 1 lakh per month. The scheme is expected to benefit 210 lakh youths. Scheme B, job creation in manufacturing. This scheme will incentivize additional employment in the manufacturing sector linked to the employment of first-time employees. An incentive will be provided at specified scale directly both to the employee and the employer with respect to the EPFO contribution in the first four years of employment. The scheme is expected to benefit 30 lakh youth entering employment and their employers. Scheme C, support to employers. This employer-focused scheme will cover additional employment in all sectors. All additional employment within a salary of 1 lakh rupee per month will be counted. The government will reimburse to employers up to 3,000 rupees per month for two years towards the EPFO contribution for each additional employee. The scheme is expected to incentivize additional employment of 50 lakh persons. Participation of women in the workforce. We will facilitate higher participation of women in the workforce through setting up of working women hostels in collaboration with industry and establishing creches. In addition, the partnership will seek to organize women-specific skilling programs and promotion of market access for women SHG enterprises. Skilling program. I'm happy to announce a new centrally sponsored scheme as the fourth scheme under the Prime Minister's package for skilling and collaboration 
with state governments and industry. 20 lakh youth will be skilled over a five-year period. One thousand industrial training institutes will be upgraded in hub and spoke arrangements with outcome orientation. Course content and design will be aligned to the skill needs of industry and new courses will be introduced for emerging needs. Skilling loans. The model skill loan scheme will be revised to facilitate loans up to 7.5 lakh rupees with a guarantee from a government promoted fund. This measure is expected to help 25,000 students every year. <laughs> Education loans. For helping our youth who have not been eligible for any benefit under government schemes and policies, I am happy to announce a financial support for loans up to 10 lakh rupees for higher education in domestic institutions. <laughs> E-vouchers for this purpose E-vouchers for this purpose will be given directly to 1 lakh students every year for annual interest subvention of 3% of the loan amount. Priority 3, inclusive human resource development and social justice, saturation approach. Our government is committed to all-round, all-pervasive and all-inclusive development of people, particularly farmers, youth, women, and the poor. For achieving social justice comprehensively, the saturation approach of covering all eligible people through various programs, including those for education and health, will be adopted to empower them by improving their capabilities. Implementation of schemes meant for supporting economic activities by craftsmen, artisans, self-help groups, scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, and women entrepreneurs and street vendors such as the PM Vishwakarma, PM Swanidhi, National Livelihood Missions, and Stand Up India will be stepped up. Purvodhya. The states in the eastern part of the country are rich in endowments and have strong cultural traditions. We will formulate a plan, Purvodhya, for, all round, for the all-round development of the eastern region of the country covering Bihar, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Odisha and Andhra Pradesh. This will cover human resource development, infrastructure, and generation of economic opportunities to make the region an engine to attain Vikasit Bharat. On the Amritsar Kolkata Industrial Corridor, we will support development of an industrial node at Gaya. This corridor will catalyze industrial development of the eastern region. The industrial node at Gaya will also be a good model for developing our ancient centers of cultural importance into future centers of modern economy. This model shall showcase Vikas B, Virasat B in a growth trajectory. We will also support development of road connectivity projects, namely one. Patna Purnia Expressway, 2. Baksar Bagalpur Expressway, 3. Bodhgaya, Rajgir, Vaishali, and Darbanga Spurs, and 4. Additional two lane bridge over River Ganga at Baksar at a total cost of 26,000 crore rupees.
power projects, including setting up of a new 2,400 megawatt power plant are at Pier Penti, will be taken up at a cost of 21,400 crore rupees. New airports, medical colleges, and sports infrastructure in Bihar will be constructed. An additional allocation to support capital investments will be provided. The requests of Bihar government for external assistance from multilateral development banks will be expedited. Andhra Pradesh Reorganization Act. Our government has made concerted efforts to fulfill the commitments in Andhra Pradesh Reorganization Act. Reorg recognizing Recognizing the state's need for the capital, recognizing, a, recognizing the state's need for a capital, we will facilitate fi special financial support through multilateral development agencies. In the current financial year, 15,000 crore rupees will be arranged with additional amounts in future years. Our government is fully committed to financing and early completion of the Ponavaram Irrigation Project, which is the lifeline and its farmers. This will facilitate our country's food security as well. Under the Act, under the Act, Andhra Pradesh Reorganization Act, for promoting industrial development, funds will be provided for essential infrastructure such as water, power, railways, and roads in Koparthi Node on the Vishagapatnam Chennai Industrial Corridor and Varavakal Node on the Hyderabad Bangalore Industrial Corridor. An additional allocation will be provided this year towards capital investment for economic growth. Grants for backward regions of Rayalaseema, Prakasham, North Coastal Andhra, as stated in the Act, will be provided. Three crore additional houses under the PM Avas Yojana in rural and urban areas in the country will have been announced for which the necessary allocations are being made. Women-led development. For promoting women-led development, the budget carries an allocation of more than 3 lakh crore for schemes benefiting women and girls. The signals, this signals our government's commitment for enhancing women's role in economic development. Pradhan Mantri Janjatiya Unnat Gram Abhiyan For improving the socio-economic condition of tribal communities, we will launch the Pradhan Mantri Janjatiya Unnat Gram Abhiyan by adopting saturation coverage for tribal families in tribal majority villages and aspirational districts. This will cover 63,000 villages benefiting 5 crore tribal people. Bank branches in northeastern region. More than 100 branches of India Post Payment Bank will be set up in the northeast region to expand the banking services. This year, I have made a provision of 2.66 lakh crore rupees 
for rural development, including rural infrastructure. Prior to manufacturing and services, support for promotion of MSMEs. This budget provides special attention to MSMEs and manufacturing, particularly labor-intensive manufacturing. We have formulated a package covering financing, regulatory changes, and technology support for MSMEs to help them grow and also compete globally, as mentioned in the interim budget. I'm happy to announce the following specific measures. Credit guarantee scheme for MSMEs in the manufacturing sector. For facilitating term loans to MSMEs for purchase of machinery and equipment without collateral or third-party guarantee, a credit guarantee scheme will be introduced. The scheme will operate on pooling of credit risks of such MSMEs. A separately constituted self-financing guarantee fund will provide to each applicant guarantee cover up to 100 crore rupees, while the loan amount may be larger. 